This is the first of seven lecture videos for Chapter 11 on Corporate Reporting and Analysis. Topics in this chapter include the corporate form of organization, common stock, dividends, preferred stock, treasury stock, and reporting and analysis of stockholders' equity. The corporate form of organization is what we've been focusing on this semester without really going into great detail about exactly what a corporation is. A corporation is an entity that is a separate legal entity apart from its owners. Corporations have many of the rights of people, such as they can enter into contracts, they can sue and be sued. The owners of a corporation are its stockholders or shareholders. We can use those two words interchangeably. Corporations can be either privately held or publicly held. If the corporation is privately held, it may only have one shareholder and the shares are not traded on an organized exchange. If a corporation is publicly held, it is going to have many shareholders and its shares will be traded on an organized exchange, such as the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. Some of the advantages of, advantages of the corporate for, form include that it is a separate legal entity. This provides um, limited liability for the shareholders because if you sue the corporation, it's not the same thing as suing the shareholders. The most that the shareholders can lose if the corporation goes bankrupt is whatever they invested in the corporation. So that's what we mean by limited liability of shareholders. The shareholders have transferable ownership rights, meaning that if they no longer wish to be an owner or a shareholder, they can sell their stock. And corporations have continuous lives as opposed to sole proprietorships or partnerships where the business ends from a legal standpoint when an owner dies. Some of the disadvantages of the corporate form include government regulation and corporate taxation. So with regard to government regulation, corporations have to file their articles of incorporation in a state and then they have to abide by the laws of that state in terms of administering the corporation. With regard to corporate taxation, Corporations pay an income tax of around 20%. Um, the income of a sole proprietorship or a partnership is also going to be taxed, but it is going to be taxed directly to that owner. So a corporation might pay income tax, and then if they pay dividends, the dividends might be taxed a second time to the owners. When a business wants to form a corporation, they are going to have to decide in what state they want to file their articles of incorporation, and then they're going to be incorporated according to the laws of that state when the state grants them a charter. Investors are then going to purchase shares of stock and elect a board of directors. The board of directors oversees management and corporate, corporate activities. Any cost incurred in organizing the corporation are going to get expensed in the period when incurred to an account called organization expense. If there's only one class of stock specified in the charter, it's going to be common stock. And the rights of common stockholders typically include the right to vote. The main thing they're going to be voting on is to elect the board of directors whose job it is to represent their interest in overseeing management and the business. The preemptive right is another right of common stockholders, and this means that if the company issues additional shares of stock, they have to offer the stock first to the existing shareholders um, so that they can maintain their percentage ownership interest. So for example, if I own 5% of a company, and that company issued additional shares, they would have to offer me 5% of that new offering so that if I wanted to, I could maintain my 5% interest. 
Common stockholders also have a right to receive a pro rata share of dividends paid. They don't have a right to dividends because the corporation could decide it's not going to pay dividends. As we're going to discuss in a later video, the board of directors is who declares a dividend and they make a decision about whether or not they're going to pay a dividend. So this right to receive a pro rata share of dividends just means that if the corporation pays dividends and I own 5% of it, I get 5% of the dividends. Finally, we have the right to a pro rata share of assets at liquidation. Liquidation means that the business is going to cease operation, sell off its assets, pay off its liabilities, and then if there's anything left, it gets paid out to the shareholders. We're going to be talking about preferred shareholders in a later video, and we're going to see that preferred shareholders are going to receive their investment back before common shareholders, but this right to, to a pro rata share of assets at liquidation means that after we have sold the assets and paid the liabilities and paid off any preferred shareholders, if they are if there are any, um, if I own 5% of the shares, of the common shares, I get 5% of whatever's left. We're going to go through some important corporate stock terminology now. And the first three terms we want to examine are authorized, issued, and outstanding. Authorized stock is the number of shares the corporation can issue according to its charter. This is probably going to be a large number, millions, tens of millions, hundred millions, and so on, because it's how many shares the corporation is allowed to issue over its life. Issued shares is the number of shares the corporation has sold or otherwise issued, and outstanding shares is the number issued less the number of shares repurchased by the corporation. When a corporation repurchases its own shares, we refer to that as treasury shares. So outstanding shares is issued shares minus treasury shares. Three more terms that are important when talking about common stock are par value, no par value, or stated value. As we've discussed, businesses have to incorporate according to the laws of a given state and a state may require or allow a company to issue par value stock. So par value is the amount per share that the corporation assigns to the stock in the charter. In some cases, it establishes the minimum legal capital of the firm. Par value is typically a small number. Par value for a common share might be a dollar, it might be a penny, it might be a tenth of a penny, it might be a one one hundredth of a penny. Other stock might be no par value, it has no assigned value, and there is no minimum legal capital. And other shares have a stated value, which is a no par value stock that has been assigned a stated value. The stated value, if there is one, is the minimum legal capital of the firm. When we talk in the next video about issuing common shares, we're going to see that the accounting differs depending on whether it's par value, stated value, or no par value. Market value is the price at which the shares are bought and sold. So when the corporation issues shares, the market price on that day is going to determine the amount of cash that they receive. Par value, no par value, and stated value have no relationship and are not affected by the stock's market value. When we've talked about stockholders' equity in the past, we've said that there are two main accounts, common stock and retained earnings. Going forward, we're going to see that frequently there is a third account, paid in capital in excess of par. So common stock plus paid in capital in excess of par equals total paid in capital. And retained earnings is essentially your retained capital. So if we add that together, we get total stockholders equity. So what's in total paid in capital 
is the total amount that shareholders have paid into the corporation to purchase shares of stock. And what's in retained earnings is the amount of income that the corporation has generated and chosen to reinvest rather than pay out in the